Okay, today we're going to do a knife review, which I occasionally do. Now, I uh, I would love to shoot this entire review outdoors because I always think that's nice, especially for, for sort of an outdoor type knife. But I have to set up a camera, I'm on a hiking trail, there are other people. So I have taken the knife outdoors. I have done two very simple tests showing you the knife outdoors, but I thought that I would do this sort of talk part, showing you the knife, showing you the parts of the knife indoors. Also, it's a bit quieter here, uh, so that, that might not be bad. Today, we're talking about a knife from a, a brand in the US, been around for a long time, Case. This is a knife that I've been eyeing for a long time, I wanted to get one, and it was not available for a while, and I, I had issues getting it, but I finally found it. So, I found one, it was at Bass Pro Shop, and I found one. So. Knife comes in a box, a simple cardboard box, nothing, nothing fancy, but it, it has a little box, comes in a little plastic sleeve, uh, and then there is uh, quite an extensive, I found, information uh, leaflet included with your knife, which is not a bad thing because this is a slightly special knife. What makes this knife so special? This is the Case XX Changer, and the Case XX Changer uh, has multiple blades which you can interchange, hence XX Changer, right? So I'm going to show you all those parts up close, but knife comes in a nice sheath. Uh, I like to hold this up next to my face so you get a bit of an idea of size. When the camera points down, maybe a little tougher. So there you go, right? We have the, the knife, we have, well, we have the sheath. In there we have the knife. The knife is very pretty. Let's look at it up close. Okay, so we have our knife in the sheath. The sheath is genuine leather. Here we have the knife, and then we have some other blades that I'll come back to. But first I thought I'd talk a little bit about the blade. When it comes to pocket knives, I have a slight predilection for pocket knives. I really like a nice pocket knife. And I will immediately say I do not consider myself a blade expert, but I, I, I appreciate a good knife. And I have always liked traditional looking knives. There's nothing wrong with uh, a nice, uh, slightly tactical looking knife, but I have found that in some circumstances, if you pull out a knife like that, it has a giant black anodized blade that is half serrated edge, some people may give you a slightly odd look. If you carry something that is a bit more uh, traditional looking, something like this, uh, I have never had any strange looks. People seem to be a bit more accepting of that, that type of knife. So I like these types of knives. Here's another one that'll come back to in just a second because obviously we need to compare these two. So just talking a little bit about the knife. This is the knife X, the, the, the case X exchanger. As I said, this happens to be the amber bone peach seed jig. Okay, that's a nice mouthful. That's what she said. And uh, which means it has bone uh, grip scales, right? And um, if you do not like the bone, which can happen, right? I'm thinking, for example, of my vegan friends, right? You don't like the bone because this is actual bone, the shin bone of the zebu cattle, to be precise. There also is a synthetic handle available, which is actually quite a bit cheaper too. That one sets you back about $90, that's US. This one is 163.99 US, so the bone is actually a lot more expensive. So if you like that, there's a synthetic handle which has sort of a camo pattern. Uh, I really like the bone, but again, if you are vegan, this may be an issue to you. If you don't like the bone, you do like the camo. Some people really like those camo patterns, uh, hunters, etc. So yeah, that's an option too. And of course, if you are a vegan, you still have to deal with the leather sheath. So there may not be a lot of winning here, but I just had my vegan friends in mind. So, they have it, so it's this, this nice bone, they, they jig it, so they, they, they make this, this sort of pattern in it, which makes for a very comfortable grip. Uh, I find that very comfortable to hold. And one thing that I particularly enjoy about this knife is if you look at this profile, you see that it, the, the scales are slightly barrel shaped. You see they're a little finer here, they're a little wider there. And that, especially when you open it up, that makes for a very pleasant, uh, comfortable grip, I found, that slight barrel shape. The buck knives, that what I just showed you here, that was a buck knife, I'll come back to that, as you can see is basically completely flat, right? This doesn't, it's, it's, these scales are completely flat, which 
I also find very comfortable, but slightly different feeling. So, there you have it. As to size, five inches closed. It's uh, quite heavy because this, uh, these, these uh, bolsters are brass, so it weighs 12 ounces. You will definitely feel this when you're carrying it around. The blade lengths are 3.6 inches for the two blades, and then there is a 3.3-inch uh, uh, filleting blade we'll come back to, and then there's a saw blade. Um, I'll show you all four blades, obviously. And what was I going to say? Yes, and it has a back lock, which means that in some countries, I'm thinking, for example, of the UK, you are not allowed to have this, right? You're not allowed to have a, a locking knife. The advantage of the lock is that you create something that is very robust and very pleasant to use. Um, there's a tiny bit of wheel, which I'll come back to when I talk about things I like about it and don't like about it. Okay, so there we have that. We've talked about the size, we've talked about the weight, we've talked about the lock. There are multiple blades, which I'll show you. Uh, the final thing that I uh, uh, wanted to say is that... Um, The blades come out. So there you have a clip point blade and these are uh, cases, that's the final thing I wanted to say, uh, cases true sharp steel which I'm not sure if anyone has ever really found a composition of. Uh, these are, um, uh, they call it a high carbon steel. Sure, uh, it's just I, I have no, I, I was not really able to find but I will admit I haven't looked incredibly hard what the exact composition of this steel is. Uh, it feels like a bit of a stainless C type steel uh, to me, but it's, you know, out of the box, the blades come sharp. One of these, I think it was this one, had quite a large burr on one side, which was a little disappointing, but that was easy to take off. But of course, if you are going to spend almost 165 bucks on a knife, then you would kind of expect that to not pass quality control, right? Out of the box, each blade came sharp. Not scalpel sharp, not razor sharp, but sharp, right? So what do you get? You get a drop point. Uh, drop points I found to be quite nice because I think this is a nice and not too aggressive looking knife blade. I really like the clip points, which is that one. I'll show you how to change this while I'm at it. You operate that lock and you keep that depressed and then at a 90 degree angle your blade will just pop out. A nice mirror polish on these blades. Uh, they are very fingerprint sensitive, but that's okay. Let's put this one in. I'm trying to do this gently so I don't blast your ears if you're wearing headphones. This is my favorite configuration, clip point. I've always loved clip points. Of course, a little thinner, right? A little thinner near the edge, so maybe a bit more fragile, but I, I don't really open wooden crates with this or anything. I've always loved this. Very, very classic look, and this is the same setup that I have on my Buck 110 Hunter. This happens to be a custom Hunter, but you can clearly see these are very similar knives, like right? classic hunting knife. Okay, so you have this setup, and then you have a blade that is described as utility, but it's basically a fish filleting knife. Nice, thin, narrow blade profile, has a tiny bit of springiness to it, not a whole lot. And if you don't like this, you can also buy this set with a gut hook. So then you don't get the utility knife, you get a gut hook. I'm not a hunter, so I would not use a gut hook. If anything, I'd use a utility blade like this a bit more often, and I'm not a fisherman either. So I would not use this to fill a fish. This would truly be a utility knife. And I see a nice purpose for this in opening packages, because it's a nice, thin little blade. Final thing I'd like to point out, as I put on the saw blade, which I also show you off in the great outdoors uh, how well that works. Get a nice little saw blade there. Of course, it's not super long. This is meant, it's a hunting knife, meant for bone, but you can, of course, also use it for twigs, etc. It's not very long. You're obviously not going to uh, saw over a tree with this, 
right? That's that's not going to happen. But it has very nice and aggressive teeth, so it does actually cut through wood without much issue. Uh, a nice little thing is that this is also it's very very uh, minimal multi-tool because this is also meant to be a screwdriver, which is a, a nice touch, I think. Final thing I wanted to point out, and then we'll get to some cutting, is that each blade is labeled. You see, saw, uh, utility, drop, and clip for the different points. And that means that if you put them in your sheath, I actually like it set up like this, so I know exactly which blade is where. Uh, if you have it in your sheath, you can see exactly which blade goes where, which is not bad. Uh, I, I like that. Nice eye for detail. Okay, so I have done with my draw point, I have cut a little bit of wood outside. I have also sawn a little bit of wood outside. And here I have this high-tech little bit of nylon string from a Gap shopping bag and the clip point blade, let's see what it does, cut, no issue. Okay, cut, no issue. Cut, no issue. Okay, so that shop and this is out of the box, I haven't done anything to it. Now there's the dreaded test. As I said, these are not razors, but I wouldn't say that's terrible either. Right, this is just receipt paper. Um, little bit of drag. You want to see the other one too, I'm sure. Uh, so drop point. I'm also reaching around a tripod, so bear in mind, not bad. And again, there's some drag. As I said, these are not razors out of the box, but they are sharp. So you will have an edge, you can immediately start cutting things. That sounds way worse than I want to make it seem. Yeah, filleting knife, yeah, especially for a filleting knife, um, were I to really fill it with this, yeah, I'd want to shop it. But that's, that's up to the user. You get a basic workable edge. So, I'm going to edit in some video material of me cutting with this thing in the outdoors, and then I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Okay, so, I thought we would do a very quick sawing demonstration <clears throat> and um, obviously I'm not going to destroy any trees here so I found a little bit of wood. This is um, obviously tulip poplar and um, it's, it's very dry, it's very old so this is not the best sawing stuff you could have uh, but just, just to get a bit of a, a feel. Now the knife is here so you can see this is rather a large pouch, right? And it's, it's, it also it, it, it sticks out quite a bit, it's quite heavy, but that's what you would expect for something that has four blades in it, right? So, gloves opened up very easily. Uh, I, I do like to check for that. Let's see if we can move the camera down a little bit. And then let's saw away. It's obviously the best way to do it, right? But that's actually going through very quickly and quite cleanly, which is not bad at all. Now, to be fair, it wasn't that hard to begin with, but that's okay. There we see it. Saw blade works. Okay, so second test I wanted to do, and the reason I, I uh, sort of switch off the camera here for just a bit is that there are people in this area. I don't want to startle anyone uh, with, with strange knife stuff. So I thought the second thing we could do is take a little bit of wood again. I put on the drop point and just look at how easily this cuts.
Again, very dry wood. But knife has no trouble cutting. You also see that I'm extremely practiced at this. I could just go in here, build a house, never return. But it does this too, pretty fine work, which of course I'm not very practiced at, but it does do it and without much issue. So I'm, I'm quite pleased, especially given that this is out of the box, rather nice. Okay, I like what do I like, what do I not like about this knife? For me there's a lot to like. I like a classic looking knife, I like the weight of the knife because with the, with the brass bolsters it, it has quite a bit of weight and I've always enjoyed that. Now, I'm not a survival expert, I'm not a great outdoorsman, I'm not a knife expert, I just know what I like and what I really like is this type of knife. A classic looking knife, a robust knife with a lot of eye for detail and that is something I want to talk about some more. But in principle, I think very pretty, attractive knife, very comfortable in hand, and there are quite a lot of things that I really like about it. So, back lock, I really like. Very robust system, works well. Is it the same as a fixed blade knife? No, but if you want a fixed blade knife, you should carry a fixed blade knife. If you cannot carry a fixed blade knife, then I would say a back lock is not exactly your worst option, you know? Interchangeability of the knife blades is quite cool, gives you a nice option to change things around a bit. If you are in a situation where you really only carry a knife to open packages, for example, maybe you want to put on that utility blade, which is a bit smaller, which looks a bit less scary, and if it doesn't matter what you're doing, maybe you do want your clip point or you do want your drop point, depending on what you are doing. And I really like that you can switch that out. So you pay a bit more, but in reality, I would say you are also buying four different tools, right? That I really like. I like the overall shape, very classic with the, the point going down there, you know, on that bolster. And it's super comfortable. I don't have the world's smallest hands, but this fits very, very nicely. There are no finger grooves, which is something I do have on my Buck 110. I've always loved finger grooves, so I would not mind having that on this knife, but I find it comfortable enough, especially with, as I said, that slightly barrel-shaped profile on those grip scales. It's pretty comfortable to hold, so I really like that. The craftsmanship is very good, so the bone and the brass bolster are flush. There is a very, very little ridge on this side. On this side I don't feel anything. On this side I don't feel anything. So the craftsmanship is good. Another thing that I really like is the sheath, the way the sheath is set up, okay? Uh, because you have, I would love to say it's Kydex, but I think it is just plastic. Uh, this black insert in that leather sheath and you can put your blades in there. They are in there fairly securely, but be a little careful because with some movement, they can come out. Of course, now they don't, but I have, I have done this, oh, there you go. I have done this before and now you have the saw blade coming out. And of course they are sharp. Now, when that would happen, if this is on your belt this way, then that would mean you would be hanging upside down. I think if you find yourself suspended upside down, you have bigger problems than maybe a blade falling out, but that's just me. So I do really like that. I like that plastic insert because it means you don't stab your knife blade through the leather, which is an option. It is just a single layer of leather, right? So that, that is something to, to, to be aware of. The knife fits in there nicely. Uh, the downside to this whole thing is that this is pretty massive, and I show you this in the outdoor part, I have shown you this in the outdoor part of the video, but it, it, stand, it sticks out quite far, right? Yeah, what do you want? You're carrying a knife, a big knife, a heavy knife, and, and three spare blades, so it, it's going to take up some space. What I did notice is that I have it on my right side, and as I walk, I was wearing this flannel shirt, which has slightly loose sleeves, and I kind of got sort of caught on this. Not actually caught, but I was kind of rubbing past this part of the flap. 
something to be aware of. Now, of course, the things you could do, you could you could carry in the, in the back of your, uh, uh, sorry, the small of your back. You have to be a little careful because when you fall on that, that can give you some injuries that are unpleasant. But this is something to bear in mind. Now, if you really don't want that, then I would say put this in a backpack, buy a separate sheath for this. Case does make separate sheaths, just single knife sheath, put that on your, on your belt. It'll have a small profile, it'll have a narrow profile, you won't rub into it. For me it was not a deal breaker, but I can imagine if you go on a full day hike at some point that may get a little obnoxious. So there is that, or you put it all the way in the front, whatever, fiddle around with that. One thing that I always really like is if you can carry a sheath horizontally like this. Because then if you do have it on your side and you move, you don't kind of poke yourself in the side. This sheath does not allow that. It is a very simple vertical, right, vertical only carry. And because your belt would be here, you have quite a large part of that sticking out. So that's something to bear in mind. What I absolutely love is the detail of the labeled blades. That makes it so much easier to look at and find what exactly it is you want. Really, really cool. Perfection is lots of little things done well. And in my mind, this knife has lots of little things done well, which I really like. The final thing I want to comment on is two things. One I already mentioned, there was a, a burr which I could feel, could really feel on one of the knife blades. That's a problem. You would not want that to happen. I think that's a bit of a matter of quality control that Kay should have caught because it was, it was pretty much visible with the naked eye. That there was, and it was not small, it was probably, I would say, almost an inch long along the um, edge. That was a bit of an issue. You can take that off yourself, but again, this is not a $20 knife, so I, I think that should not have happened. The second thing I will say is, tiny bit of play, right? Now, I think that is unavoidable if you have a system where the, knife, the blade is supposed to come out completely. I could also picture that if you take this off and exchange them all the time, that at some point maybe that problem will get a little bit more pronounced, right? Um, but I haven't gotten to that stage yet because I've only owned this knife for, for a few weeks now. But if you compare that, buck, this has no wiggle. There is nothing. But then again, this blade doesn't come out, right? So you have to take that into account. Now, the two blades side by side, buck versus case. Which one would I pick? Difficult because in this case, they're quite different, right? You have the added functionality of the case with the saw blade and all that, uh, which, is, which is very nice. The buck is a classic. So classic that the, 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 the back lock was actually at some point called a, a, a buck knife uh, because Buck invented that, that system as I understand it. I say as I understand because as I pointed out, I'm not a knife expert, but this is what I seem to recall from reading online. It is a classic knife, the buck. And it's also quite heavy. It also has the brass bolsters. This one you can get with the finger grooves, which I, I always rather liked. Great knife. And especially my, my custom knife, um, I, I'm, I'm very, very fond of and I really love using. Having said that, it's a pretty close second. With the added functionality, with the beautiful bone, which I really love, I think it's, it's a great, great look. It's pretty sweet. So, out of the two, I think, and this is a slightly lame answer, but I'm going to give it, it would really depend on the purpose. If I were to go on a very long hike and I don't know, ex I wouldn't know exactly what I would uh, may run into. I would take a fixed blade, but in addition, I might carry this just because it has the saw. It has some other options. If it would just be a hike, simple hike, you know, an hour, forty-five minutes, I might carry the buck, and I would be perfectly happy, right? So there is all that. I hope this was useful, and um, I'd like to see you later. Bye-bye.